So in this video, I'm going to show you how I would set up the development and the deployment pipeline for this project that I have built three months ago. And I've made a two part series on my YouTube channel already building this project from scratch. It's this one and this one It's one of my first videos. So the OGs out there know what this project is. But basically, if you don't know what it is, it's a project similar to Readwise. So Readwise, it's this platform where you can import highlights from Kindle, Instant Paper, iBooks and many other platforms. And then you can review your highlights and you can recall them over time. Basically, what you get is that you get a couple of emails every day. Uh, I have just set up this to send you an email every day in the morning. You get these with some random highlights that you have highlighted over the history of all your books. And this is pretty much the tool. This is, of course, a pay tool. It's, it's worth it. It's a pretty good tool. But as software engineers, I decided to build this from scratch. Make this free, of course, and open source for anyone to use as well. Basically, you can self-host yourself and just run on any cloud you'd like. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I have done that. And as well as how I have set up a simple CI CD pipeline that you can set up on your projects. And another reason why I have decided to make this video is I see a lot of new people coming to going. And if you've taken all of my videos, you've built all these awesome projects, but now you want to deploy this. So I'm going to show you how I deploy this small SaaS applications that I have. This is a project that I use every day. So every day I receive emails from this project. And, and this is how I have set up everything to be minimal, as cheap as possible and quick to run everything. So before we actually go, and in case you are interested in building complete microservices, reliable and production ready, I have recently released my full microservices course on YouTube. There's a third of that course for a fee that I have released. If you want to get the full course, you can also join the Self-Made Engineer, which is my community projects that I am building. Basically, here you have access to all of my future courses and the full course of the microservices. You can also have access to the community where we are discussing uh, every day new stuff. You can access the leaderboard and all of that. So if you want to level up as an engineer, that is the place to be. OK, so back to the project. If I go here back to GitHub, basically, this is where I have the project hosted. You can see that an hour ago, I did a change, and if I click on here, you can see that there's two successful checks. The first is an audit. Basically, this audit is a complete development check. Basically, what it does is builds the project, so it compiles everything to go. It runs the test. It does a static check to see if everything is according to the language standards, and it can do linting. It can do anything here. And then here, if that if that passes, of course, it then runs a Google Cloud build that is going to deploy automatically this image to the uh, serverless uh, serverless instance. And basically, uh, let me show you here on the diagram. This is the most simple version of how it started. Basically, you have a Docker image, send it to Cloud uh, Run, for example. This is uh, using the Google Cloud platform. And then here I have a scheduler that runs every day at some amount of time and it sends basically a request to my API. So I don't directly interact with the API as of now. In the future, I'm thinking of having a UI and all of that, but you basically, the, the cloud schedule basically makes a request to the API and then the users receive an email. Now here is the complete version of what we're going to do. We have developers working and pushing new codes every day to the source code repository. So do this GitHub repository here. And what happens is that with GitHub, you can create GitHub actions, which are going to trigger whenever you do something else. So in this case, I'm watching for changes or merges in the main uh, branch. After that, if it detects any of those changes, it's going to run the tests, a static check, a winter, a build, and if you're wondering what all of this looks like, let me just increase the font for you guys. I have here this file workflow. I'm going to go over with it with you in a bit. But basically, this is what's going to run. Uh, it's going to set up the actions, it's going to do a mod verify, a build. It's going to do a go, mod, a go vet. And then it's going to install the static check and do static check. And also the tests. You could also run a goal inter here. I don't like to run it because it's a little bit too strict for my liking. And then if the branch that was just worked on and pushed was the main, then we're going to trigger a new deploy, right? So this is going to be the production deploy, for example. You could create a new rule here for development, staging, whatever you want. If the build passes, 
this is going to be on the cloud on the Google Cloud site, for example. Actually, let's just do that. Let's create here some change. Uh, what I'm going to do is, for example, so I have just added, for example, this now keyword on the unsubscribe uh, page on the email. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to just commit this uh, trigger test and I'm going to push this to, to the main branch. Then if you go back to the GitHub page and if you refresh, you can see that a new trigger action has been created. You can have the audits and the builds. Then if I go here to the actions tab, you can see that a new trigger has been started and it's going to run all of those uh, things. So it's going to verify the dependencies. It's going to do all of this. And then here on Google Cloud, I have this build that just started because we did a push to main, which is the main branch. And as you can see, it's going to basically run this image that I have. It's going to run it. And basically what's going to happen is that it's going to replace this new Docker image with the old one if it works. If it doesn't, it's going to roll back to the older one. And what happened behind the scenes is that Google Cloud is going to go to Artifact Repository or Artifact Registry, where you're going to have all of the versions of your API or of your project. It's going to continually add them so that you can roll back easily to one of them. And then this is pretty much all of the uh, first here we have the development uh, workflow, which ends right here. And then here we have the, the CD, the, the deployments pipeline. And then here is the, the application working. Basically, a new version is added to the Cloud Run. We, we have it deployed. And then the scheduler at every day at an X amount of time, it's going to hit an endpoint on the Cloud Run, which then is going to send an event to the PubSub. Now, this part here I have not implemented yet. This is for the future because I want to have, uh, in case I want to notify third party integration, if I want to send an email, which I'm already am, but if I want to send an SMS message, what I want to do is have an event and then the subscribers can do whatever you want. This is basically what we're also doing on the microservices course, in case you're interested. But the simple case that I'm currently doing is just this one. So we're just sending an email directly. And then what happens here is that we call uh, an email processor and then email processor has an abstract implementation. In this case, it's a concrete implementation of the SendGrid, which then is going to send the email to our users. So this is basically the whole flow. And this works for me and for any small SaaS project that you could build. Of course, you're not going to have a schedule most likely. You're not going to have all of this. But if you ignore this part here, you can basically reproduce this on all of your projects and have a cloud run and you're going to be good. And I'm going to show you now how you can actually do this. Let's see if the build has actually completed. So if I go here to my VS codes, to my GitHub, you can see that this audit has passed. Here it is. It was just four minutes ago. And if you go to here to the codes, you can also see that the build on the Google Cloud has also passed. So let's check that out. And as you can see, the build is successful. And finally, if we go to Cloud Run, we can see that the image is up. And if you go here to the revisions, we can also see that the new version was just updated five minutes ago. So now let me show you how you can actually implement this from scratch on your end. Basically, it all starts by having our source codes in GitHub, for example. You could use any other platform, I think, to have access to triggers. As long as you can do this, having a GitHub action, because these GitHub actions are free, you can use them very extensively. You can even install some pretty crazy stuff on it. So we're going to use them. Now let's go back to the code. And then basically all we need to do is go to your source code, create a .github uh, folder. This is going to be so that GitHub knows that this is going to be the folder for the workflows. And then you can create any file here called anything you want, as long as a YAML, and it follows this structure. So if you want to learn more about this, you can just search on Google by GitHub Actions. They have their own syntax for this. Basically, this is the trigger that I have on the condition. So on push for the branch main or a pull request, this is going to run. And here are the jobs. So the first thing, as you've seen, is that we are installing the actions for the checkout and we're setting up Go, all of that. And so basically, after you have just pushed for the first time, you're going to have this folder and you're going to go to the actions tab. You're going to be able to see your actions here. So if you go to this part here, because all of this here is already covered just by doing that with this file, we can, of course, change it to your liking. Now, if you're on GCP, this is what you could do. Basically, go back to the GCP. Then what you do is that you create a service. 
Now the trick here to make this very, very simple is to select the continuous deployment from GitHub. So you can just choose the repository. Google Cloud is going to link it and we instant for any changes and then it's going to trigger the build. So we click here on Setup Cloud Build. Basically, the only thing you need to do is connect to GitHub if you haven't already done. Select your repository that you want to do and then click on Next. Choose whatever branch you want to be the production one, to be the one that gets deployed. Then the other thing that you need is also a Docker file. So for me, I have this Docker file running and compiling this image. Basically, as long as it's working, it should be fine. It can, it's, yours is going to be different from mine, of course. And then just hit build. Once that is done, all you need to do is choose the name for this. I'm going to call this, for example, node-based test. The location, I'm going to choose the location that is closest to me. And then I'm going to hit on allow unauthenticated invocations because I'm going to have the authorization and authentication on my application, not on this layer. And if you go here to the container and then to variables and secrets, basically you can add here any environment variables you have. For example, I have one to connect to MongoDB. So I'm going to have here the MongoDB URI. And in this case, I think it's just Mongo URI. And then here I'm going to put your value. After that, all we need to do is just hit create and you're going to have your instance created and then it's going to be ready for listening for changes and the automatic deploys. And so as you can see, this is just doing its first build and deployment. So here on the logs, you can just wait for it to be deployed. And after that, it's going to be ready for new builds. So let's just wait for this first one to complete. You could go here to cloud build and check if what's the status on this. You can just click on this build. And after this build has been completed, you're going to have your Docker image, which then is going to be on the artifact registry and which then is going to be replaced on your cloud run service and it's going to be up. And then if you go back to your source code, you can see that for me, I have one failed because this is the old project that I have removed. And this is the new cloud build that I have just added. So for you, it's going to be this one running. And then you're going to have the audit passed, of course. And after this, you're going to do a new change, which then is going to run the audits and as well as the cloud run builds. So let's just wait a little bit for this to finish. And then, as you can see, if you go back to the cloud run, for me, I have here on the revisions. The first one has already passed. Now I have here one that has failed because I have forgotten to add one environment variable. So the Docker container fails to start. And how I did is I went here to, to the edit, I added the new variable, and then I hit redeploy, and it was very fast because it didn't have to build the Docker image again. So if I go here to the logs, I can see that my server is listening on port 8080. Now let's do the whole flow again. Basically, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to remove this thing that I have added before. So let's just do a commit with this. And after we push this, and if I click here on the status, you can see that we have the audit running. And then one of these is going to be the trigger that we are actually have created. So first, let's wait for the audits to complete. So after a while, the audit has completed, so it's successful. And then let's check also the cloud builds. It is successful as well. So let's go back to cloud run and see if the new image is deployed. It's this one here. And as you can see, it is passing already. It is deployed, so we are listening on port 8080. So this is how you can implement a very simple but yet effective development and deployment pipeline for your Golang SaaS project. So let me know if you enjoyed the video and comment down below. So see you on the next one.